tours with the hands. So, two and two together, just become like Trisha. Well, math, physics, and hands on. Exactly. And then what year did you enter the apprenticeship program? 85. 85. In RAT 134, believe it. I was so green, man. Um, my first job site was at the airport, 85, with Robert Stage Electric. And um, the job was just so massive. I mean, my God, it was about 100 people from Robert Stage and other contracts also. But um, I guess most of the big jobs, like, right away. And it was just kind of a, amazing that the, the equipment and all the tools, like the big condo vendors, I mean, three-inch condo vendors, I mean, just like, it was just amazing to me, you know? Also, cable pulls. I mean, just like gigantic cables being pulled by tuggers and machines. I was fascinated by that. Four or five years. Yeah, I did the American Airlines back box. Miles and miles was a conveyor belt underneath the ground. From there, the United Terminal, um, Delta, cargo buildings, the post office, um, the people mover, train. Oil field, left there. Um, then I went to Hewen, Navy Pier. I built the first Ferris wheel. Outside the, um, the Skyline stage, the parking garage. And then from there, the Lawson YMC downtown. And then from there, um, the um, Sears building in Hoffman Estates, yeah. The Sears Center? Exactly, okay. yeah. yeah. I was there for quite some time. Um, the, um, the Children's Memorial Hospital. We can, everybody, everybody knows the Ferris wheel. That's what they appear known for. But um, on top of that, um, I came to the school in 1997 as a full-time instructor. I was referred by Russ Ponder. I said, why me, Russ? He said, because you're fair. Man, so yeah. So I took, on, I took the responsibility on that and um, became a first-year apprentice. I think I was 34 years old at the time. Yeah, so I started the program, I was thinking of early 20s. My first class was condo bending, math, codes, motor controls, every class here I've taught. Back then we started giving college credits out. So we had to go to school, we got our degrees. So I went to um, St. Xavier's, then to um, the Labor College in Silver Spring, Maryland. And from there, I got my, my uh, bachelor's in labor studies. And then I uh, asked to go back to my, get my master's, University of Baltimore, in legal and ethical studies. Yeah, so on top of that, that's when I got promoted to, um, from becoming an instructor to um, my title now was outreach. Where typically um, they have no, typically their parents aren't trace people. So typically you, you um, if your dad's an electrician or carpenter, you follow your dad's lead. Now give them a little exposure. And that's why Jumpstart was created. Me and Tony Griffin, um, he taught at one time. We approached his alderman, he lived in, at the time, lived in Roseland. And we asked the kid to use our office to hold a class for two evenings. She said, no, I'm on, I'm on board. So we had um, roughly 20 people show up for Tuesday and Thursday. Out of pocket, we um, paid two instructors. And they took our tests. And out of 20 people, like 15 made it. Record breaking, right? Took the results back to John Donnelly. He said, man, um, keep building it, man. So we, wanna, we talked to the alderman. She said, go to West Side. Location of West Side, South Side, West Side. Then, just like that, became a household name. We just got getting calls from aldermen and state reps, 
we're gonna jumpstart location in our, in our neighborhood. Okay, one out west, one out south, one at Dawson Tech in Bronzeville, one at Westside Tech in Pilsen, St. Sebastian's Church also, and I'm on the south suburbs in Fort Heights. And we're from the 20 people to like now, like almost 250 people. And it was giving me my household name. And I saw, I was walking down the same next street one day in, um, in the Walgreens. The guy said, Mr. King, I remember you, I took a jumpstart class. I said, how'd you know the test? He said, I didn't take the test. I said, why? And I said, well, jumpstart gave me enough confidence to get my GED. I did it. I said, well, that's, I got it. At that point, it was just not about what we do, exposing people how we do it, tell them how, what's the requirements to take a test. I'm behind you. Jump started. The first thing, well, the first thing is that um, is go talk to people one on one. This is what we do. These are requirements. This is what to expect. You all in? Yes, no. Okay, this is our test. Okay, we go over the mathematics, the paper folding, the mechanical computation, all that kind of stuff before the test actually happens. Jumpstart was created to attract more females and minorities. And just that fast became a household name. So now people who come, they I just, you know, they everybody's welcome. We use the big multi-purpose room right next door. And um, it's kind of comical because we don't turn we, we don't turn anybody away. And you come and we give our spill and we give you a, a diagnostic exam. And based on the exam, some people just start walking out the door. The same for me. I'm over my head, whatever. But you stay there for three days and um, you know, at the end of your um, session, we'll give you a certificate of completion. I'll do a presentation and um, first of all, they're, they're impressed with my title. I said, it's, it's no big deal, man. I mean, just, I, I go to work every day. If they can teach me, they can teach you. And that's how I did my stuff, you know? Um, I like math and stuff like that. Physics, I mean, this is physics, right? You can get shocked or how to, how to produce electricity. And that's how it goes. And just little baby steps. We give people hope that um, free tuition, a guaranteed job, and stuff like that, and benefits. I mean, because um, I, I had no idea I would go to college. I finished high school, I said I'm done. Well, I, I, I typed up my apprenticeship, I said I'm done with school. But then I got a chance to go back to school as an option. But it's not, you, you can go back if you don't have to go back. You can be a journeyman, or a foreman, or an estimator. I mean, just that, you can stay in the electrical industry forever and make a good living off that. All the, every, every class we've um, gone through so far, and people say one thing, if I knew this when I was in high school, man, like Chicago Bills. I mean, just being that young and being exposed to what we do is, is life changing. Okay, oh my God, in the past 17 years, about, you know, about a thousand. Oh, it's mandatory. It's mandatory. I, you know what, uh, I, um, I take high school students here all the time for tours, and they also look at pictures in the wall, walls. And being high, high school age, they look and say, man, it's all white guys. That's their first impression. So I'm assuming they think, well, that's not for me. But they walk down to the hall, and, and just that fast, they start seeing more people of color, and also more females. At that point, they say, they'll feel a little better about themselves. I can do this. Oh yeah, now we are. Exactly, yes. When did that change? About, about 25 years ago, maybe longer. Yeah. What was the reason? Well, the world is changing. It's the right thing to do.
Yeah, my Russ Ponder, Sam Evans, um, the Harshin brothers, Reggie and Derek, the Rayborn brothers. I mean, it goes on and on and on, right? I mean, just I'm on their shoulders. You know, I um, got a text last week from um, one of my guys. He just made superintendent. I said, hey man, congratulations, well, you, should, you deserve it. His response was that um, I'm on your shoulders.